Hi guys, welcome back to the session 6 of history. In this, we will be doing the Indus Valley Civilization Part 3 by me, Abhinav Sharma. Right. The topics that we will be covering today will be the religion of IVC people, then the burial practices they had, agriculture. domestication of animals and finally the trade of the Indus Valley civilization people. So likewise let's start off with the very first topic being the religion of Harappan people. Now the had the main chief female deity was the mother goddess. Now as we have seen earlier, we have seen many images of terracotta figurines of a mother goddess. They are made from the pinching method. It has been found throughout the civilization itself. It has been excavated throughout the civilization itself. And then also has a uh, inscription like kind of like its figure where a plant is showing growing out of the embryo of a woman representing mother goddess or the goddess of earth or the goddess of earth or goddess of nature basically this is the uh, main fertility goddess depicts the fertility that has been given to us by the nature itself likewise let's see for uh, ourselves so in this figure it is very much clearly evident that from the embryo of the figurine of a female figurine grows up the two plants as two kids so this is what the, they have depicted the nature to be to us likewise they also had a chief male deity the second important god of the Harappan people that was the proto Shiva as represented in the seal sitting in a yogic posture on a throne having three faces and two horns alongside he is also surrounded by as we can see alongside he is also surrounded by a elephant, a tiger, a rhino and a humped bull and there are two deers appear at his feet. So this guy is in yogic posture having three faces. So first up front, second here and third looking toward the other side. So this was a second main uh, say deity for the Harappan people, those they used to preach. Then there are also evidences of phallus worship like shivling. They used to uh, say as their main uh, goddess was goddess of fertility or the mother goddess itself. So the phallus worship has also been seen as it depicts the starting of the new civilization. Then another important thing that no temple has been found and they were icon worshippers, not idol worshippers. Now, what is this icon worshippers? Now, today, if we go to any temple, say we find many idols of the gods, right? So, first of all, these people did not have any sort of a temple as shown in the movie uh, earlier in the previous session. We were talking about Mohan Jadav also, right? So, there is no such temple that has been found. Rather than that, people used to worship on uh, these deities on an icon as say on a seal or a figure uh, crafted on by a brush or something like that but they did not used to preach the idols itself right then they also had certain sacred symbols that ironically match the sacred symbols of today we can see to ourselves that what these sacred symbols were and an important aspect those have been asked many a times in the exams like UPSC, civil services, then into SSC and banking etc. and other government examinations. This, this particular part of the sacred symbols of the Harappan people have been asked because these are common to us till date. So let's see for ourselves what these are. Likewise, the very first is the sacred tree for the Indus Valley civilization was the tree of people 
that is still a secretary for us in India, right? Second is a sacred plant that is Tulsi. Now again, Tulsi being a very sacred plant till date. Then the sacred animal was the bull, but it has to be humped. The humped bull was the sacred animal for the IVC people. Similarly, we do preach Nandi till date, right? And sacred bird being dove, the bird of peace. Right, guys? <clears throat> then there's Another aspect that we have also discussed earlier with the Halappan people believing in ghosts and evil forces, they use amulets for the protection against them. Now, while we were talking about the amulets and we'll be talking about them uh, in detail in the culture aspect, right? So, we'll also find this point that most of the amulets that they were utilizing were to protect themselves from the evil forces as have been found uh, in the burials uh, alongside burial in Lothal so it has been uh, Lothal and Kali Bangum so this evidence we have found throughout and most of it in Lothal and Kali Bangum now there are also the evidences of snake worship as we can say that Pashupati Nath the, or the proto uh, Siva seal as we call it today depicts Lord Shiv with his snakes and all so snake was there are little bit examples been said that they used to preach snakes also then ironical fact about this entire civilization is that we have not found a single sword till date now henceforth by two points we can say they were peace loving people they were peace loving people why? Because two aspects of temples and swords have not been found till date. So, wherever there is a conflict is due to two reasons. One is the, say, religion. And second is due to the ample amount of, say, arms if they have. But they, did, uh, they had none. So, we can clearly say that these people were peace loving henceforth <clears throat> coming up with the burial practices is one of the most important aspect that we need to cover up right likewise their burial practice if i talk about it their general practice like everyone has rituals for the dead so they so that they so the general Practice was burying the body in the north-south direction, right? So the body has to be buried in a direction that is from north to south, head to toe, right? So they'll be burying their bodies on a particular based on a particular direction, and then we this is a common thing but the uncommon thing in their burial practices that it changed changes from places to place for example let's take mohan judado first of all in mohan judado we find three types of practices that is complete fractional and post cremation so complete by the complete i mean to say that they used to completely uh, bury their dead or they used to fractionalize them with their certain entities likewise if they have burned them then the ashes will go or the full uh, parts of the body will be buried alongside which have been taken out otherwise they will burn the body and use the ashes to be buried under beneath the land so in Mohan Jadado, we see this aspect whereas there are different practices as I told you Next comes the Kali Bangam. Now in Kali Bangam, we have a unique type of burial practices. We have two kinds of graves. That is one is the circular graves and other one is the rectangular graves. So they used to bury their dead alongside by circular grave. I mean to say that the grave that we see the graves are in circular format. And other than that, there are also rectangular graves being found at Kali Bangam. So they used to bury along uh, their belongings 
they used to bury the dead along uh, the belongings that was the thing happening in kalibangam right likewise kalibangam in harappa we find h type cemetery now what is this h type cemetery let us discuss a bit about it h type cemetery is basically they bury say one body from north to south as we all know here also it has to be head to toe north to south north to south right so there is one coffin and also if you remember that previously i told you that harappa is the only place where we find the evidence of coffin burial so here we find the evidence of coffin burial now what they were doing is suppose this is one body being uh, say buried second will be close to it and there will be intermediary body being buried which might be like forming in at shape so this was known as the h type cemetery like then comes surkotada in surkotada we have another kind of a burial that is the pot burial now in pot burial as you can see over in the image what they used to do is this is a post cremation kind of a burial they used to burn their uh, dead and then after that put the ashes they used to put the ashes into a pot and then bury it so this pot contains the ashes and the body of a deceased harappan say personality right so this is a unique kind of a burial which is known as the pot bur uh, uh, pot burial that was being done in surkotada then comes lothal here is an evidence of a double burial now by double burial what do we mean let's watch it out for ourselves now as we can see in the pic there are two bodies in one grave so what they used to do is either they used to like wise if suppose in a family of two male and female a couple male dies they'll uh, they'll bury him first and when finally the female dies they'll bury her again at the same place with the same male right so this was the double burial of lothal like similar if we go forward we'll also find about the agriculture now when it comes to the agriculture like agriculture is a necessity as we have seen it in the earlier uh, sessions when i was talking about the settlement of human being so homo sapiens were able to overcome homo neanderthals just because of the agriculture because now they were settled they did not have to uh, um, uh, roam all around one place they could do whatever they wanted to do in one place only right so agriculture was an important aspect into the lives of human civilization so is the same over here as agriculture was the main backbone of the ivc as the soil as the soil here was very fertile the soil as the soil was fertile so for the same due to the fertility of the soil they used to have huge amounts of uh, agricultural products with them the sowing period if i talk about it was in november and harvested in april as per still we are doing it in april we do celebrate vaisakhi in the north and other festivals in the south right so actually when the sowing was done in november it was done because the flood water receded the flood water receded and reaped uh, reap their harvests of wheat and barley and in april before it it went to the next flood so it was harvested before the next flood so as the flood water receded they had ample amount of spaces like fertile soil so they used to <clears throat> sow their agriculture products in november and harvest them in april before the water again came up as in the, the flooded plains then wooden plows and stone sickles were utilized we have this evidence because we have seen them then they had canals and dams likewise 
they had canals and dams been built up as again evident from the movie if you've seen mohan dadu so they had a dam that they were about to break was about to break and the entire uh, story of the movie goes around this place the dam that they were having right then also the grange was thrown in the granaries as we have talked about the two uh, rows of six granaries in harappa i told you about that the grange was thrown over here agriculture produce was stored over there then the crops they use the uh, the crops that was known to them and it's a very important aspect of this entire agriculture part is wheat barley date pea sesame uh, uh, mustard millet ragi bajra jowar and at lothal and rangpur we also have found rice husk evident of paddy farming so or paddy agriculture so lothal and rangpur are evidence for paddy otherwise we have found it all kind of say crops diversified crops throughout the indus valley civilization then ironically they were the first one to produce cotton and for the same the river indus got its name sindhu now how this happened let me explain you guys that cotton in greek is known as sindon right since they were first to produce uh, cotton the river was called sindhu and from sindhu we have sindhu ghati sabhyata right so <clears throat> they had very well irrigation to be very precise they had very well irrigation and it is evidence from the their dams and canals as we talked about them in specifically in dhola vira so dhola vira we have this example dhola vira right and important point being that one of the most important thing that is a sugar cane was not known to them so if ever they ask sugar cane was known to them if ever the question comes that sugar cane was known no sugar cane was not known to the indus valley civilization right then guys let's talk about the domestication of animals now domestication of animal rearing was practiced right it has been evident from discovery of humped bull and other figurines terracotta figurines and the animals the part that is important into it is which animals that they used to domesticate so for the same always remember the animals were buffalo they used large number of animals such as buffaloes mm -hmm. oxen sheep asses goats pigs elephants cats dogs camel horses etc so let's revise this thing that yes buffalo was known to them oxen yani ki bull yani ki agar hum hindi mein baat kare to hamare sand sheep yani ki bhed asses yani ki ghada jangli ghada goats pigs elephants cats dogs camels horses etc these all animals were known to them and were domesticated by the indus valley civilization people let's come across the very important aspect that is the trade now it was based on the barter system that is coins are not evident the coins were not evident and the barter system was basically based upon certain things like they had certain amounts for certain like bullock cart then uh, say a pack of animals had a set value boats used to have a set value like these were basically used into the barter system and when it comes to boats boats were also used for the transportation purposes right so this is what the barter system was barter system means exchange ek ke badle dusra dena like money was not there then they uh, they had weights and measures made of limestone 
or and steatite etc generally cubically shaped uh, and were in the multiples of 16 sola guna matlab 16 32 and so on was their weight it was basically a linear uh, uh, say for example if we are able to see here so these are the weights being utilized by the ivc people cubical in shape this they had a very linear system of measurement why because several sticks inscribed with a marking have been found in the discovery like if you remember that uh, earlier we did about the copper scale and that time also i told about the linear system so we have found the scale system for the same is a copper scale being used cu stands for copper scientific name for um, symbol for the copper is cu so coming up weights and measures were known to them then they had linear system of measurements always remember this points right very important points they were then they have extensive trade relations with mesopotamia central asia persia and afghanistan like how do we know about it we find certain evidences like in very first session i told you about the sources of history if we find the coins of some place from one place to another there is a trade going on and also other than that mesopotamians have also mentioned ivc people harappan people in their text since their uh, language has been deciphered they used to call it meluha so always remember this term meluha that has been inscribed in bold by me they are uh, the ivc ivc people in this valley civilization was known meluha as inscribed in the sumerian text and they had certain uh, uh, intermediary uh, say stations Uh, to come to meluha these stations were <coughs> behran that is diman they had certain intermediary stations so stations were diman present day behrain behrain right diman or behrain present day and markanas or markan or markan coast right these were the two important uh, stations for the people those who used to come from uh, sumerian uh, grounds to the ivc right then they had they had certain major imports their major imports let's see to it the uh, major imports and the area from which they is people used to import the product very first is the gold gold was imported from kolar in karnataka and persia in iran other than this afghanistan a little bit of gold was also been imported from uh, pakistan uh, afghanistan also then silver was from afghanistan and persia that is present day iran copper from khetri in rajasthan khetri is in rajasthan baluchistan and arabia right then tin from afghanistan and then is a very important name lapis lazuli from bedt shakhan of Afga uh, district of afghanistan now mm. lapis lazuli is a stone is a gemstone basically so very unique gemstone been found out it's a blue colored gemstone and one of the most costly still date then they used to take jade from central asia they used to import jade from central asia and then turquoise from persia iran now the question comes since at that time there were only four civilizations including ivc why come we do not take the name of chinese civilization or mesopotamian civilization or the egyptian civilization where do these people come from so let me be very precise i was very precise about it earlier also when i told you guys that the civilizations being settled were first four civilizations were these but apart than this people were settled throughout the globe we can say throughout um, asia it is evident to us so they used to live in small tribes not as a civilization right coming up with the major exports now their major exports were cotton goods as they were very first one to uh, produce cotton and about cotton has been inscribed in the egyptian civilization also the pharaoh used to have the best fabric from india itself then te uh, terracotta figurines 
then pottery steatite beads conch shells mm -hmm. ivory products etc were major exports they had the important coastal towns were lothal that was an artificial dockyard as we have done earlier surkotada that we have done bhatrao and daimabad were the very very important coastal centers for the same and with that thanking you all i hope you liked it and do subscribe to our channel and go forward towards other